Matt Levi Investigates is brought to you by the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. Stanford Car Development, LLC. We know Hawaii, and we build for Hawaii. And Shamanon University of Honolulu, a native Hawaiian-serving institution. It is not absolute, but the right of American citizens to own guns is written into the Constitution. Tonight, we will not debate that right, but look at the current status of guns in Hawaii. Firearm-related violence around the country in recent months has dominated the news. School campus shootings, domestic terror attacks, and violent rampages by unstable psychopaths. These reports of violence have left people fearful, wondering how to protect themselves and their families. Tonight, how many guns are out there in the islands? What are the regulations involved in getting a firearm? What does it take to be a safe and responsible gun owner? Does owning a gun really make a person safer? What we discovered early on is that gun ownership in Hawaii is on the rise. It's tough to give an exact number um, because Hawaii law requires that when you bring a firearm into the state, you have to register it. But when you leave, um, you, there's no requirement to notify us. There are over a million firearms registered in Hawaii. Mostly accepted estimated between 700 and 800,000. When you look at the, at the stats coming out of the Attorney General's office, tremendous marching up every year of firearms purchases, not just in Hawaii, but throughout the nation. And that's, that's stemming from that uneasy nature of, do I live in a safe world anymore? It's kind of a fear issue, regardless of who creates the fear. The fact remains that that is one of the biggest components of this. We mentioned, uh, we mentioned just increase in sales. Mm. Are most of the buyers of guns now first-time buyers or collectors or what do you see? They're first, they are first-time buyers. They are first-time buyers. If fear is the motivator for many people buying guns here, is that fear really justified? When it comes to doing the job, there really is only one way to do it right. Safety first, always. This dedication to safety should also extend into our homes and neighborhoods, because a safe community is a better community for everyone. So if you keep any firearms in your home, remember, safety first, always. A message from the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. People become the best they can be living in a safe home. Home shouldn't hurt. Live life at Keho Place, Kaka'ako's transformation to a modern, architecturally diverse transit station neighborhood. Now under construction, choose from tower or townhouse living with convenient shops, restaurants, and a future transit station. Keho Place offers a unique urban contemporary lifestyle in the heart of Honolulu. Aloha, I'm Stanford Carr. We're proud to present Keho Place, an innovative new way to live. Stanford Carr Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. In my line of work, I look for the details that other people miss. I follow the evidence. I let science and psychology tell me a story. I uphold the law. I believe in justice. I connect the dots. And I see the bigger picture. 
I am a Shamanad student. Hawaii residents are arming themselves at a record rate, with registration lines running out the door. But perhaps surprisingly, guns are not the weapon of choice when crimes are committed. Okay, so looking at the last four or five years of homicides, the most common method of homicide is a beating. That's about 42%. Then stabbings make up about 28%. And then comes firearms at about 21%. There's only 15 firearms used in a homicide in the last five years. In Honolulu? In Honolulu, yes. We're one of the safest cities in one of the safest states. We always rank usually in the last two or three states as far as gun violence and violence in general. There's nowhere in the United States that has more strict laws than Hawaii does. We have very, very strict laws about firearms, ownership, usage, where you can possess, where you can't. <clears throat> nowhere else is there laws any more strict than that. And that's a, a big component of why we have so little gun problems. When there are gun problems, many times it's with unregistered guns in the hands of criminals. Hawaii has the lowest rate of gun deaths in the country. People here are far more likely to die from car accidents or drowning than by shooting. In fact, firearm homicides are not even among the top 10 causes of death. At just 3.1 firearms-related deaths per 100,000 people, our rate of gun death in the islands is more than three times lower than the national average. What are the requirements for somebody to own a gun in Hawaii? Uh, there's different requirements depending on whether it's a long gun or a handgun. If it's a handgun, well, the, the initial application process for both is the same. You have to come in, fill out a permit to acquire, an application for permit to acquire. At that time, that's when we run the background checks. We'll contact their medical provider to see if there's any mental health issues or other issues along those lines that would prohibit them from ownership. We also run a background check through several databases to see if there's anything to prohibit a person, and we check our own internal records. After the 14 days, and there's a 14-day waiting period required by law, at the end of the 14 days, the applicant can come pick up their application. If they're applying for a long gun, they can then take that down, purchase their long gun, and actually they can purchase as many long guns as they want on the one permit. For a handgun, you get one permit per one gun. And there's also a training requirement for handguns that you have to compl successfully complete in order to be able to purchase a handgun. In, in the firearms division now, they are trying to make some changes that will fix a lot of problems. The lines have been humongous in the past. Major Robinson is trying to fix that, putting in a new computerized system. I think that's going to be a huge benefit. How many applications does the department approve each year? We get about 11,000 applicants a year, and our denial rate's about 1%. What are the factors that cause you to deny ownership? Uh, the factors are actually, it's not up to us, it's spelled out in state law. If you're a convicted felon, if you're under indictment for a felony, if you have a mental illness that, re that requires treatment, if you have a drug or substance abuse addiction, if you have an organic brain disorder, or you've been convicted of a crime of violence. All this registration, all these laws, well, I'm not against the, the laws here in Hawaii, but I am against the fact that it's always the legal guys who get the brunt of all the new laws and the new restrictions, not the guys that don't care. The guys that don't care about the laws don't care that they've got a gun that's stolen, that isn't registered. Those are the people we need to focus on. There is example after example of how strict Hawaii's gun laws are. We are the only state in the nation that requires the registration of all firearms. But are gun crimes only committed with unregistered weapons? Every week, union members in carpentry and drywall across the state go to work building the projects and facilities that improve everyone's quality of life and in support of fair wages and benefits that will create lifetime opportunities for all of us, now and for generations to come. Let's build a better Hawaii, together. 
A message from the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. Live life at Keho Place, Kaka'ako's transformation to a modern, architecturally diverse transit station neighborhood. Now under construction, choose from tower or townhouse living with convenient shops, restaurants, and a future transit station. Keho Place offers a unique urban contemporary lifestyle in the heart of Honolulu. Aloha, I'm Stanford Carr. We're proud to present Keho Place, an innovative new way to live. Stanford Car Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. My dream is to be a soccer player. My dream is to become a doctor. At Shriners Hospital, we treat children through age 18 and specialize in bones, joints, muscles, and sports injuries. Shriners Hospitals for Children, for dreams without limits. At Shriners Hospital, we love caring for infants and children. We treat bones, joints, and muscles, including broken bones and sports injuries. Contact us or your child's doctor today. Shriners Hospitals for Children, for dreams without limits. When it comes to doing the job, there really is only one way to do it right. Safety first, always. This dedication to safety should also extend into our homes and neighborhoods because a safe community is a better community for everyone. So if you keep any firearms in your home, remember, safety first, always. A message from the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. The worst mass shooting in Hawaii's history took place in 1999, when a mentally unstable worker gunned down seven of his co-workers with one of his many legally owned and registered firearms. After that incident, Hawaii changed its laws to require doctors to report mental health issues that could disqualify applicants from owning guns. Still, more than 80% of mass shootings in this country have been committed with guns that were legally obtained. I think there's different types of gun violence. There's um, like a very common use for firearms is domestic violence. That's why we have special laws about domestic violence and firearms. Um, those type of situations, there's a lot of firearms utilized. And in those situations, those guns are almost always legally registered, legally possessed. The criminal who goes into a 7-Eleven and robs at a gunpoint or who shoots it out with the police, those type of things, those are almost always illegally possessed or obtained. If I'm a bad guy, I want to buy a gun <coughs> illegally. They want to go through all of this stuff. How easy is it for me to get a gun? I would think it's just as easy as any other illegal thing that you would want to get. Drugs is a prime example. If there's a demand, right, there's going to be a supplier, regardless of its legality, Drugs is a classic, again, drug is a classic example, right? Drugs, certain drugs are illegal. But again, if you really wanted it, you can get it. It's really based upon supply and demand. How many illegal guns would you estimate there are here, non-registered? I couldn't give you an exact number, but we recover a fair amount of firearms every year. Um, the vast majority of those have been stolen, usually stolen in burglaries from houses, and now the criminal element has those firearms. So a person in Hawaii has gone through the steps of legally obtaining a firearm. How will that firearm be used? The shotguns and rifles and even handguns are normally used by the average person. Um, the three big areas would be informal target shooting, hunting, and the smallest category would probably be self-defense. What's a legitimate use of firearm to you, both handgun long rifle and, and uh, assault rifle. I see many, many legitimate uses for long guns. I have many friends who are very serious hunters, competition shooting. I've seen that, I think that's a very positive thing in the community. Are there legitimate uses for assault rifles? Well, I'm gonna argue with the term. There is no such thing. You're probably referring to the AR-15, which in military hands is a full auto machine gun. In civilians' hands, it's a semi-auto, meaning if I pull the trigger once, I have one round go down the barrel. If I pull it again, I have another round. There are plenty of legitimate uses for that. AR-15s are used extensively in competitions. I personally use one to hunt. It's a very specialized AR. 
that meets all the criteria for hunting legally. I don't see a lot of legitimate uses for those type of weapons here in Hawaii. They are specifically designed to kill human beings. I mean, that's their design, the manufacturer. That seems like a weapon that is inappropriate for a place like Honolulu that is so, so urban and so densely populated. A bullet from a weapon like that is gonna travel a long way and go through a lot of things, including houses. Let me just ask you straight. Uh, do you think a person having a gun in their home makes their home safer? It depends on the person, specifically on the person. Again, it goes back to the state of mind. How the person is perceiving the actual use of it, the actual need for it, more than anything else, right? And how much they're willing to what, educate themselves into the consequences of what, using such a tool which can take someone's life. Excellent, excellent. I think guns pose more of a danger than a help. I don't think guns are the solution to many problems, even for us. We carry guns, but they are usually our last resort. A first time buyer thinking that they purchase a handgun, it's gonna make them safe, completely safe, and their home safe. Is that realistic? No. So am I hearing you right? You're saying that handgun ownership in the home won't necessarily keep you safe? Not in the context that most people believe. But again, there is a, there is a psychological factor. And you need to look at it this way. Remember earlier you asked me, has there been successful attempts of, of uses, uses of handguns? Well, the mere presence of one may, dis but may discourage someone from even continuing the act. In fact, may actually make them flee. In most situations, I don't think purchasing a firearm for home defense is going to bring a lot of solutions to the situation. I think it's going to present a lot more problems than solutions. You now have the possibility of someone getting it accidentally, a child getting it, accidental discharges. You also now have a lethal weapon around the house. What happens to many firearms is the houses get burglarized and they get stolen. The likelihood of someone breaking into your house while you're home is already extremely low in Hawaii. Now you need them to break into your house while you're home, you to get your firearm out as a locked case which you required, then load it and engage the person and successfully defend your house. It just doesn't seem worth the trade-off to me to bring that much danger and lethality into your house to try to address this very rare, unlikely occurrence. People become the best they can be living in a safe home. Home shouldn't hurt. Every week, union members in carpentry and drywall across the state go to work, building the projects and facilities that improve everyone's quality of life and in support of fair wages and benefits that will create lifetime opportunities for all of us now and for generations to come. Let's build a better Hawaii, together. A message from the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union. When we learned that our son had cerebral palsy, we were worried his future would be limited. Then our doctor told us about Shriners Hospital. Shay received excellent care at Shriners. Now he can enjoy all the things he loves. 
Shriners Hospitals for Children for Dreams Without Limits. At Shriners Hospital, we love caring for infants and children. We treat bones, joints, and muscles, including broken bones and sports injuries. Contact us or your child's doctor today. Shriners Hospitals for Children for Dreams Without Limits. Many experts say gun ownership in the home has the potential to cause more problems than it solves. I think that's a wonderful made up argument. Show me the stats. Show me the stats that indicate that, especially in Hawaii. They can't show you that. It doesn't exist. I think it's bunk. There are currently no available statistics locally to gauge the success of firearms used in self-defense. But a national study looked at more than 600 home shootings in three major cities. It found that only 13 shootings were legally justifiable or acts of self-defense, and that for every legal or self-defense related home shooting, there were four unintentional shootings, seven criminal assaults or homicides, and 11 attempted or completed suicides. What percentage of situations do you think exist where a person has been able to adequately defend themselves in their home using a firearm? Do you think it's a high percentage? In my entire career, I can think of one case. I can think of three cases where people were shot with their own gun by someone else in their home. I can think of one case where the person successfully defended their house. What is not argued is that if you decide to buy a gun to defend your home, you need training. And defending yourself or your family with a gun may not be as easy as it looks on television or in the movies. Actually, if you watch television, it actually defies physics. <laughs> it actually defies physics. It's unbelievable. How so? The most common depiction of a, a fight, number one, is when the person is shot, they instantly fall. The second one is that, which is probably the most dramatic in television and movies, is that when someone's shot, their body goes flying three or four, maybe even 12 feet back. And the original person, meaning the person who's firing, doesn't move at all. That defies all physics, because everyone knows for a reaction there's an equal opposite reaction. So if that were true, both people should be flying. So what happens in that situation? The person would actually continue coming, right, until the correct target was, was um, acquired and was actually somehow affected to create the stop. I think there is an illusion of what a firearm is going to do for you. You're not going to shoot someone and have them just drop to the ground. That's not how it works in the real world. And the ability to point a gun at another human being and pull the trigger is a lot harder than most people think. And I don't think it's going to work out the way they think. I think it, people are going to end up getting hurt, needlessly hurt, when there are better alternatives. As a firearms expert, how often do you tell yourself in your mind, this person's been watching too many movies and been watching too much television. The minute they ask me which bullet will have the best stopping power, as soon as I hear that, that's a little, as they call it, a clue that the person has been watching a little bit too much television or reading a whole bunch of, lot of books or magazines. That happens a lot to you. About 90% of the time in class it happens especially for first-time um, buyers. So the class that we um, are teaching here is a handgun safety class. It's a requirement to get a permit to acquire a handgun in the state of Hawaii. This is a basic class. I always tell my students, this class is just to give you the basics, the fundamentals, uh, everything from safe gun handling, uh, safe use, safe storage in the home, um, and most important, uh, the laws that we have for farms in Hawaii. And I stress again, this is a class, this is a basic class for fundamentals. Um, this does not give you um, the preparation or the skills you need to be able to really protect yourself in your home. Our preference would be that they take the course that specifically addresses that. The NRA has a very specific class, protecting yourself in the home. And with that in hand and with regular going to the range and making sure you stay proficient, absolutely they can protect themselves and their family. 
So just buying a firearm and getting uh, registered mm -hmm. could make it more dangerous for you if you're not if you're not well trained. I I totally agree with that. Yeah, unless you're going to use it for just for um, sport, right, or recreation. If you're thinking about using it for protection in a home, yes, it could be much more dangerous to have it if you don't have the proper training. Um, it could come to the point that if, you, if you're not prepared to use it, if your mindset is not where you're prepared to use it, that personal farm could be taken away by somebody and used against you. Let's get back to home gun ownership um, and misperceptions. Um, what do you tell someone who says, I'm gonna go buy a gun, I've never fired a gun before, but that's gonna protect my home. Uh, what are some of the factors that you would like that person to consider? I tell them get a big dog. A big dog's gonna protect your home a lot better than a firearm is. A big Why? dog's gonna protect it when you're not home. A big dog is also going to warn you if someone does come in your house. And a big dog will probably actually take care of the problem before you have to. Involving a gun in a confrontation between two people is usually only gonna make the situation a lot worse, a lot faster. What are your greatest concerns uh, as both a, a police officer and as a parent regarding guns? Um, my concerns from both, both as a police officer and as a parent, it's kind of the same concern, which is a child getting a hold of a firearm and killing another child with it accidentally. That's something that happens far too often. We're lucky to live in the state that has the lowest rate of gun crime in the nation. Whether that comes from strict regulations, geographic isolation, cultural factors, effective policing, or simply the Aloha spirit, it's something to be thankful for. Uh, go ahead and load the magazine for me. Okay, here we go. Good. Okay, make ready. And while most citizens have Good. the right to choose whether or not to arm themselves, we hope that if you do consider bringing a firearm into your home, or even if you have one already, you'll keep yourself trained to use it, and hopefully never have to. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt Levi. Good night. Matt Levi Investigates is brought to you by the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Hawaii's Carpenters Union, Stanford Car Development, LLC. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. And Shamanon University of Honolulu, a native Hawaiian serving institution.